What we're doing here is we're just going to cover the bases of what we are going to talk about in depth. Okay. And the first thing that I like to look at is the interface, I call it the interface primer, where we decide what kind of plugins and filters that we're going to use with each setup. Excellent. Why do we do that? Well, we're going to be able to expose more data data that you cannot normally see. You're going to be able to see things that you probably dreamed you could never see before. We can also use these features that I started out by saying most people don't use. 2% of analytics users use advanced features, so I'm going to show you how to use those advanced features to expose even more data. Excellent. So really, we're enhancing your business data with filters and special plugins. Yep. We also want to, and we're doing this in order, the way I would set up any analytics account. So now we want to look at identifying the needs of each website. And there are special needs. These are areas that most people don't look at. Most folks just throw the code up and off you go. So what I would like to do before I install is I actually look for a site that's broken to begin with. Mm -hmm. I use a special program to detect broken links, mm -hmm. report that to the client. That will affect the quality score you receive from search engines. So one of the easiest things for me to do to begin with is look for broken links. Not really tied, this is not really tied into standard analytics protocol setup, but nonetheless, I have software that will go through and check for broken links. And there's other things it checks for too. Basically, I want a clean site that is recording data 100% correctly. I also want to get into um, seeing if you're running pay-per-click advertising because if you are, then my setup will be a little different than as if you were not. This is the same as e-commerce tracking. Yeah. That means now you're selling products and probably you being the business owner that is selling products on your website would love to know through analytic data when you sell a product, yep. how much you sell it for, yep. what is your profit, mm -hmm. what is your return on investment. The, Google Analytics offers you answers to all of those things, but not if the code is not installed properly. Once again, the e-commerce integration is not standard, and if you do not do a custom installation with e-commerce, you will not be able to see when people buy stuff. This is probably the four most common, but there are a lot more I'm going to talk about that are special needs when you set up a website. Flash goal pages as well need to be dealt with a little bit differently than a standard Google Analytics tracking code implementation. I see. So we'll cover all that. Okay. Special requirements. Sometimes you're going to find that you're, you want to track events on your website which really gets into, for example, a video. You might want to know how many times people click stop, how many times they click go, how many times they click rewind. Uh, you may have interactive flash games where mm -hmm. people may play with a ball and bounce it. You might want to know how many times they bounce it, how many times they stop it. But event tracking lets you get right into flash and detect events. Occur occurrences happen in flash and you can track all that, but once again, that's a special installation. You'd need to determine that up front before you just go and throw that code on the site. Mm -hmm. Part of strategy, like I see implementation of the code as strategy. We need That's a separate strategy that will tie into reporting at the end. So if you're running email campaigns, for example, you will probably want to manually tag the links so that Google Analytics will pick up that visitor from that traffic source, then you can see when people click email links what they do on your website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Joining Ad uh, AdWords to Analytics also requires a little special touch. You've got to know up front that the client is running AdWords or any pay-per-click for that matter. The setup is a little different. Also, uh, blocking your IP addresses. Yep. Uh, IP addresses, when we block them, what we're really trying to do, once again, is keep your data 100% clean. Mm -hmm. So you, for example, the owner of this website, and all of your staff 
it could be in your case, you know, a couple hundred people on a network yep. that you really wouldn't want showing up as visitors when they land on your own website. So what we do is we block IP addresses and IP address ranges also for corporations so that nobody shows up in your analytic data that should not be there. You follow me on that okay, Mukesh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, one of the final things we always like to do is identify the coding language used on a website. Could be ASP, PHP, HTML, Flash. But knowing that up front, once again, helps us streamline the implementation so that we get it right the first time. So, so basically, like, oh, if we know on the website beforehand, like, uh, what kind of, uh, uh, like, uh, we are using the setup there, that helps 